What's up, everybody? It is that time of year. It's time for our top 10 movies of 2022. I am Jacob Bartley for Apocalypse Movies. It is one of my favorite things to do every year to talk about those 10 movies that you have to narrow it down to that impacted you so much. For me, it's always so much fun figuring out what movies land in what spot and which movies barely make it and which movies you have to leave out. But let's get into it. My top 10 movies for 2022. Let's go ahead and start with number 10. And that is Turning Red, the Disney Pixar film. I don't care what anybody says. I love animated movies. I have always loved them. Every time there's a new Pixar movie coming out, it's high on my radar. And this movie, I did not think I was going to like it that much, but it's absolutely incredible. It is such a great film. It's not just a kid's movie. It has so many elements to it that everybody can enjoy. And it kind of took the world by storm a little bit. I work at an elementary school and the music from this movie, the kids could not stop singing. Also, it is just a fantastic film. It's funny. It has heart. It deals with growing up at this middle school age for young girls. It has so many things going for it and I just really enjoyed it. A great movie is a great movie, animated or not. So Turning Red, coming in at number 10 for me. Coming in at number nine, which might disappoint some people because it's so low, but hey, it's on my list and it deserves it. Top Gun Maverick. This movie just gave me one of the best theatrical experiences of the year. I saw it in IMAX with the whole crew and I was absolutely blown away. It was so much fun. I liked the first Top Gun. I was late to the party on it. I watched it uh, um, about three years ago for the first time. It, it's a great movie. I understand why it's a classic. And then this Top Gun Maverick was just such a simple, fun story, but it had everything of a classic blockbuster movie. And obviously it was a huge box office success, brought so many different people out to the movie theaters, bringing them back in after the pandemic. I love Top Gun Maverick, and I think you should too. It is such a fantastic movie. Coming in at number eight is a movie I did not expect to love so much, and that is Elvis, the Baz Luhrmann Elvis movie starring Austin Butler. First of all, Austin Butler better get an Oscar nomination. It is a one of the best performances I've seen all year. I think he will. Look, I know the story of Elvis and the way he made music and how he went about getting his music and all that stuff is very controversial. But just judging this movie on its surface for what it gave us as a viewer, it is a really, really great experience as a moviegoer. Tom Hanks was... His character was despicable playing his manager. He did such a great job making you hate that character. And like I said, Austin Butler absolutely kills it as Elvis. He made me a big fan of him just because of this movie. And I love music and I love when music and movies can come together and give us a special experience. And it really showed me, regardless of everything else regarding Elvis, the controversy, any of that, his work ethic was absolutely amazing. Everybody should strive to work that hard in whatever field they do. And that's what I took away from this movie. All right, coming in at number seven is The Black Phone. Now you knew a horror movie was gonna find its way on here at some point. The Black Phone caught me by surprise. It's a adaptation of the short story by Joe Hill, um, who's actually Stephen King's son, for those who didn't know. The short story is awesome. They did a great job of turning that very, very short story into a feature length film. About as good a job as you can with having to add in all the other stuff to build around the short story. So that movie is intense. It's some, It's kind of like, it's so simple. And I've used the word simple a lot in this video. And I think that's a good thing. Like sometimes we just need simplicity in our storytelling and we need something to just, you know, show us straightforward what's going on. I really enjoyed The Black Phone. It's, if you're looking for a, a good horror movie to watch, I highly recommend it. It's a little disturbing, but that's part of hor the horror genre. So yes, The Black Phone coming in at number seven. And at number six, we have Glass Onion, A Knives Out Mystery. The Ryan Johnson sequel to Knives Out. Glass Onion is absolutely incredible. I saw it in theaters. I had such a great time with this movie. We put a spoiler review up. If it doesn't 
past the sequel as far as quality or entertainment it's right on par with it it is not disappointing at all it lives up to the knives out name it was very um entertaining as well had a lot of fun characters benoit blanc is just awesome awesome character played by daniel craig i highly recommend it it's on netflix now so all you got to do is open the app and hop on it's it's a great fun time so yes glass onion coming in at number six Coming in at number five is Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Finally, an MCU movie this year that did not disappoint me. While it's not perfect, I had a great time with it. They were dealt a shorthand having to make this movie after the passing of Chadwick Boseman, to say the least. They did about as good of a job as they can considering the circumstances. I love the Shuri character. Maybe I don't want her to be the lead of the Black Panther franchise going forward. I think she worked amazing as a side character in the first movie, but she stepped up to the plate both as an actress, Letitia Wright, and as a character, Shuri. I thought she did a great job being the lead of this movie. She brought a lot of emotional range to this character uh, that we hadn't seen in the past from her before. And I think the character stepped up in the world in the movie and did a great job as well one of the main reasons i love this movie is because of namor the submariner no more as they call him in this movie they changed namor and made him one of the most badass characters that we've ever seen in a comic book movie in my opinion i just love this character and he has the aztec mayan roots and just to get that representation in there is just absolutely awesome. And I can't wait to see what he does next in the MCU. So yes, Shuri was awesome. Namor was awesome. The whole cast was awesome. I think Ryan Coogler delivered again. So I got Black Panther Wakanda Forever coming in at number five. And my number four favorite slash best movie of 2022. This one might be the most surprising. Like this movie's on your list and it's that high. And that is Prey. The Predator universe film, uh, I guess we could call it whatever you want to call the Predator universe. It's a movie in that franchise and it's a prequel. It's about one of the earliest Predators to come to Earth and this young woman has to hunt it down and take it out. And I have still not gotten over this movie. It stuck with me ever since it came out. It's so badass. The violence, the action, the way the Predator is taking out fools in this movie and the fight with the bear is so incredible and then the way that the main character has to try to outsmart the predator and her relationship with her brother oh it just delivered on so many levels and i i, I freaking loved it i freaking love prey i cannot live it down and think about this it is a straight to streaming movie i would have loved to watch prey in the movie theaters if they ever do a theatrical release for it re-release whatever they want to do i'm there and coming in at number three is everything, everywhere, all at once. Now, I know what you're saying. Yes, everybody has this movie at the top of their list, but I just have to be honest. And I watched this movie pretty late to the party, to be honest, about three or four months after it actually came out. I was freaking blown away. Uh, everything Everywhere All At Once is such a unique story. I love the the jumping into different realities and how they're just hanging out in the van and they they got to connect and, and jump into the other bodies. It kind of reminded me of The Matrix a little bit. Just that one element, how they have like a hub and they're trying to figure out everything from there. All the different elements, all the different timelines with the different versions of the characters and how they all intertwine together and how they have this ability to uh, jump into any of versions of themselves. And that's the name of the movie right everything everywhere all at once they can be everywhere and what they did with the main character michelle yo was absolutely incredible jamie lee curtis was so much fun what they did with the main character and her daughter one of the best stories told in movies this year and it's a freaking kick-ass action movie as well oh man this movie has everything it's a little bonkers a little crazy not for everybody you kind of have to keep up with it but i love everything everywhere all at once it is such a great movie and it deserves all the attention it's getting, has gotten, and is going to get. And my number two movie. This was a very difficult decision. My number one and my number two. My number two is Avatar, The Way of Water. I talked a lot about this movie. I said it's one of the best movies ever made. I believe that. Better than the first one. This movie has everything. And again, not a complex story. 
very straightforward, but it's a beautiful story. And it, the visuals are the best I've ever seen. Best special effects of all time. This movie is so gorgeous on so many different levels. And I know a lot of people say, oh, visually it's great, but uh, I don't like the story or the dialogue. Like, what more are you looking for? There's The story is awesome. It's a story about family and there's so many dynamics going on. The dialogue, I think the dialogue was crisp and straight to the point and, and clean and just boom, boom, boom. Like I thought this movie was damn near perfect. Avatar The Way of Water coming in at number two. And my number one movie of 2022 is The Batman. Batman, Robert Pattinson starring. It's been my number one movie ever since it came out and it's going to stay that way. It is also a very personal movie to me, a very special movie to me. It is the last movie I saw before I lost somebody very important to me with that person. It was also the last movie that they saw. This movie will always hold a special place in my heart. I had it at number one all year, um, even before that. And I really struggled with Avatar and this movie. But look, I'm a big kid. It's Batman. I'm, Batman is my second favorite superhero of all time. And I love this. This is just like the evolution of the Batman character. This is what Batman should be today. And they just delivered on all levels. I was iffy on Bruce Wayne at first and how he's, he's acting all sad and mopey. But I'm thinking about it like, no, the... Bruce Wayne at this age, that's how he would act. So Batman, beautiful. The Riddler is amazing. Paul Dano. Thank you, Matt Reeves. Uh, Colin Farrell as the Penguin. I can't get over this movie. I freaking love it so much. That's why the Batman is my number one. So that's going to do it. Those are my top 10 movies of 2022. What are yours? What do you think about my list? Please let us know. We would really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to check out everybody else's list. You got Jake's list, Brian's list, Keith's list, Geo's list have either came out or are out. So go check out those lists. Also check out our 2023 most anticipated movies list. All those videos should be out by now. Thanks again for watching. I'm Jacob Bartley for Apocalypse Movies. See you guys next time.